Hi, Francesca. Um, talking about digitization, can you tell us what your biggest hope regarding digitization is? My hope is that digitization uh, is going to serve the people so that we can put technology, artificial intelligence data at the service of our citizens and we can make government more open, more collaborative and more transparent. So the hope is that digitization will serve the public. Mm -hmm. And if you're thinking in the opposite direction, the biggest fear, so what's that? The biggest fear is that digitization will end up in a dystopia. Uh, that there is no democratic control over technological infrastructures and that people lose the ability uh, to live in a democracy. And uh, bringing it to a very uh, realistic uh, and pragmatic uh, approach because you're working for the city of Barcelona. So how does the perfect digital city of the future look like? I don't think there is one perfect city of the future. I think that uh, cities are uh, beautiful places because they are good for the people that live in it. Uh, I think a good digital city is a city that is shaped by its citizens, uh, that where citizens can uh, select the priorities uh, and can decide uh, that they want to live uh, with more affordable housing, uh, with better air quality, uh, with less pollution, with better public space with better healthcare services, so it's a city that can provide better services to its citizens. And then um, I think one of the big challenges for us is how to regain democratic control over data in particular, uh, because this is part of regaining trust and rethinking the relationship between citizens and government. So if citizens uh, trust the government and they can see cities as custodians of new digital rights, then they also uh, we can incentivize a better uh, sharing uh, data culture and we can work in partnerships. I think cities are great because they can create ecosystems uh, with companies, smaller companies, bigger companies, but also with research centers, with academia, with data journalists, and engage citizens themselves. And it's this type of partnership that can lead us, uh, that can lead to create better networks of digital cities. Yeah. Sounds good. What are the biggest hurdles to bring this to, uh, to, le to real life? Yeah, I think uh, changing big organizations is always really hard. So the core of a digital transformation is not a technological transformation, it's an organizational change and a cultural change. So for instance, what we've done in Barcelona is we created uh, a set of ethical digital standards for cities where we codify policies around um, privacy, security and ethics by design. Uh, we codified uh, clauses in public procurement contracts where uh, citizens can regain the control over their data. We call them data sovereignty clauses. Uh, we change the way to invest the public IT money in open source uh, technology and free software so that uh, we are part of a campaign public money public code uh, and we've been working a lot with public officials uh, to change their way to do for example agile service development to work in cross cross function functional teams um, to to learn what it means for them, you know, this digital transition, but also to acquire new capabilities and new digital skills and uh, and education. So I think the big challenge is really transforming uh, the public institutions to make it more open, more collaborative, more transparent and more efficient. And I think for me, I am a believer in public sector innovation. And I think that if our institutions, public institutions work better, then they can facilitate this digital transition throughout society, not only for a specific industry or for specific uh, companies, but also to spread throughout the society and generate the well-being that we need. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think you, you uh, already answered a bit of this question, but I uh, <laughs> will still uh, answer it because a bit yeah. more detail perhaps. Yeah. How can societies regain control not only over digital technology, data and infrastructure, but also over the services that are mediated by smart technologies like utilities, transportation, education yeah. and health? 
I think in cities becomes very evident that um, data is like a new meta utility that it fuels uh, transports, uh, healthcare services, education. Uh, without data, you cannot do ambitious policies regarding uh, climate change, uh, fights against climate change. You cannot do proper planning policies. Uh, you cannot target the question of affordable housing, and so you need to regain control, democratic. Control control over digital infrastructures and data mm -hmm. to implement better data-driven services of the future. And so I think a big question really is about data sovereignty and how we can make sure that citizens themselves can decide what data they want to keep private, what data uh, they want to share, with whom and on what terms. And we call this a new social pact on data. And I think to implement this vision of a more democratic and inclusive digital infrastructure for society, we also need to invest in privacy enhancing, decentralized and rights preserving a digital infrastructure that can enable civic participation and can enable political expression. So I think it's detrimental, for instance, to use big platforms that have as the core business model, the manipulation and, and commercial exploitation of personal information information and data to do political participation. So in Barcelona we have created a platform that's called Decid in Barcelona where we engage uh, more than 400,000 citizens in shaping the city's policy agenda. Uh, and so um, we are we are running a large-scale participatory democracy movement, which is a hybrid of online democracy and offline democracy. So we are trying as much as possible to really rethink the smart city to make it serve its people, so that this digital revolution can be a right for the many and not just a privilege for a few. Yeah. Thank you. We are trying to move from a surveillance capitalist model where um, data is a commodity uh, which is traded and owned by very few companies which have at the core of the business model uh, the commercial exploitation of personal information uh, to a model where data uh, is owned by citizens themselves, is controlled by them, it can become a public infrastructure that we can open up to the city's ecosystem on top of which we can can build data-driven services in healthcare, education, transportation and so on. So data as a public good and the digital infrastructure as a public good to improve the life of the citizens. And I think these are very different models and I think we have um, a big challenge in front of us where Europe I think can step up and uh, build a people-centric digital um, framework and, and the people-centric digital industry as well that puts uh, privacy, ethics and security of their citizens at the very core and their fundamental rights of citizens at the very core. And then we can build a digital society that's more democratic and more inclusive. And this is the reason why uh, together with New York City and Amsterdam we created the Cities Coalition for Digital Rights which is a global coalition that is backed by UN Habitat, uh, by UCLG which is the largest global network of cities and Euro cities, where now over uh, 40 cities are collaborating in creating a shared roadmap that's based on citizens' digital fundamental rights. And now we are extending this coalition to over 100 cities globally. So I think the value of creating ethical digital cities and cities that work for their citizens is that cities can work in a network and we can create global alliances to make sure, yes, that the digital revolution is uh, a more democratic revolution. So that's what we say in Barcelona, there is no digital revolution without a democratic revolution. That's a great sentence. Thank you very much, Francesca. <laughs>